confident. These words accurately describe both of tonight's hurlers in the matchup. Dan Heron still stands as the elite arm of the game in just about every number that matters. And if you have a bat, he's got your number. Cole Hamels has this thing called the ring. And without him, the reigning champs would not have been. A slow start has now started to yield regular steps towards domination. Tonight's matchup, in a word, classic. We've got a whale of a pitching matchup. We've got a whale of a crowd here in the Redhead section tonight. The world champion Philadelphia Phillies going head to head with the Diamondbacks. Glad to have you with us. First of all, before we get to our open, you've got something in your pocket you'd like to give away. We're giving away some goodies. You ready? How about to Ray? This is a Dan Heron baseball. Dan Heron signed baseball. Ray, that's for you, my friend. And this is Ellen. Ellen, a Dan Heron autographed baseball. Congratulations. Thanks for being so loyal. Oh, my oh, goodness. Thank you. Uh, he needs some love. He needs some love. Yeah, all right. Now i got to get to the pitching matchup because this is why Dan Heron baseballs have been given away to these loyal fans. Dan Heron, Cole Hamels, very special. There they are. Yeah, Dan Heron's a guy that uh, Diamondback fans and Redheads know. Every fifth day the Diamondbacks have a big-time chance to win, even though they're 14 games under 500. Cole Hamels, all he did last year, he was the World Series MVP. He's used to pitching in big games, and for the rest of the season, the Phillies are going to be playing in big games. You guys like homers? You guys like power? Last night, we had some incredible power. Both guys that are talked about for their strikeouts and Ryan Howard and Mark Reynolds, both very special home runs last night. Yeah, they are such a joy to watch. If you make a mistake to these guys, they will crush it. That's a good pitch right there for John Garland. Down and in, it only went 430 feet off the bat of Ryan Howard. And then, of course, on the other end is Mark Reynolds at third base for the Diamondbacks. You make a mistake to him, he'll hit it up there to Mark McClune on the pregame show. Look how far that one went. Unbelievable power. What a matchup we have tonight. These are the best fans of baseball. You guys ready? Oh, my goodness. The Redheads are ready. We're giving away tickets tonight out here. The best costume, all the noise. Certainly glad to have you with us. By the way, Dan Heron certainly with a miracle work tonight. We'll talk about it. Mark McClure talks about Dan Heron as he faces Cole Hamels. Miracle man, Dan.
Diamondbacks baseball brought to you by APS, the official power partner of the Arizona Diamondbacks, and by Southwest Airlines. Southwest Airlines is ready when you are. Go to southwest.com, grab your bag. It is on. And it is on out here in the redhead section of the Diamondback game. All of these folks fired up about the Diamondbacks in tonight's pitching matchup. It is certainly worth the price of admission. It is Dan Heron versus Cole Hamels. Also, Dan Heron making it worth the price of admission every time you come out to the ballpark, even when he's not pitching. To benefit Dan's Miracle League of Arizona, he and Sanderson Ford are auctioning off a 2010 Mustang. You can purchase tickets $20 each or six for $100 at the park, or you can call the number on your screen and get your raffle ticket. Again, one ticket and you could win a 2000 2010 Mustang, courtesy of Sanderson Ford. The Miracle League of Arizona is something that is very near to Dan Heron's heart. Getting to have a personal relationship with a few kids um, with special needs and, and seeing the need for a field um, in just my area, my hometown of, of Scottsdale, um, and you know, seeing the opportunity to put a field there, and now getting things like the car, uh, you know, being able to get raffled off and getting more and more funds to put this field up, uh, you know, it's really going to be done first class. And yes, it is signed. Dan and his dad, Dan Sr., teaming up with America League, the America League of Arizona. Heron and Hamels are next, and they're fired up out here in the redhead section. It's next. Darren Sutton and Mark Grace have the call on Fox Sports Arizona. free. Four free tickets for that gentleman for his energy and his passion tonight. Certainly glad to have you with us. This man has a passion. That's a very unique manner in which he delivers it. We'll hear from him throughout the evening. Charlie Manuel, let's take a look at his star-ridden starting lineup brought to you by Blimpy. Jimmy Rollins is hitting again. He is rolling. Disregard his season numbers. Victorino, Utley, and Howard homered last night. A season for the ages for Ibanez. Jason Worth with a steal of home on his resume this year. Pedro Feliz big hits his middle name Carlos Ruiz catches and Cole Hamels pitches four for 30 with a bat in his hands Daniel John Heron is 28 years old he's a three-time all-star he was finally at least human in his last start just human five innings four runs allowed but otherwise it's been a very special season one of the better seasons in all of baseball this year well, we're gonna find out just what Mr. Heron's made of he's going against the top offense in the National League and they're all swinging the bat well at the same time. So, Dan Heron, introduce yourself to the Philadelphia Phillies, the reigning world champs. And they're excited to see him right away. Jimmy Rollins with a base hit to right field. We were talking about Rollins. 
at 236 since July the 2nd. Rollins hitting 337, so here he goes. Always a threat to steal as well as Jimmy Rollins. So. About the worst start the Diamondbacks and Dan Hare could ask for the very first pitch. Whack into right field for the base hit. Dan is a pitcher that still uses an awful lot of fastballs, whether it's a straight fastball or a cut fastball. A boatload, nearly 70%. His curveball is thrown a lot in that situation to start off a batter when you see the dispersion of pitches. The curveball is not a strikeout pitch. Now, the split figured fastball it is. Well, the, yeah, the curveball is, is, like you said, to get ahead of the hitters, to get strike one. It rarely gets swung at. And of course, the cut fastball is a pitch. That's a straight fastball swung right through. 0 and 2 the count. For Dan Heron, if you're looking at that right arm, the cut fastball would run in to this hitter, Shane Victorino. It seems to me, and Darren, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems to me that's more, the cutter is more of a weapon for the right handed hitter, the one going away from the right handed hitter. I agree. Over the top of my fastball. It's a stolen base there for Rollins, number 18 on the year. But Victorino goes down. He was just schooled by Hare. Runner does move up. Three different pitches to Victorino. The curveball for strike one, the fastball for strike two, and there's the strikeout split finger. As you said, the throw from Miguel Montero in the dirt, and an easy stolen base for Jimmy Rollins. Last couple of years, and I knock on wood when I say it, the Diamondbacks have managed to keep Chase Utley at bay. Six for 27 the last two years. Look at those numbers. I mean, to keep him quiet, you're really doing your work. You know, you're doing some kind of scouting report on him, but this is a guy that you're just not going to hold him down for long. There's another breaking ball taken for a called strike. A lot of Diamondback fans still piling in here. They're still in line. 3,500 walk-ups for a Dan Heron game, so the folks around the city are still eager to come out and watch the Cy Young candidate. I look forward to hearing that number a little bit later on and seeing it rise even more. People still in line, 3,500 strong so far, and they're still piling in here. And it's worth grabbing a cold one and settling in and watching him pitch, hey, especially well, he, with the world champs. He's got a good program. He's got her carrying the beer. <laughs> Utley overall this year, you saw the numbers, an OPS of 974 for a second baseman unheard of. Split fingered fastball, one and two, the count. Boy, that was a dandy, too. That's a couple of split fingers now. The strike out of Shane Victorino, and then strike two there to Chase Utley. He's had Utley, Utley scratching his head after that pitch. Victorino struck out. He chased. A split fingered fastball. Pride of UCLA, Utley. Fastball in off the plate, two and two the count. But a good pitch there. Tried to go with the fastball in to get to freeze Utley for strike three. Got it in there. He didn't miss out over the plate where he can get hurt. These folks looking on in the redhead section against a team that is 18 wins this month. 18 wins for the Philadelphia Phillies. Really rolling. Well, since 1987. Bouncing ball and it's fouled off. So we're going back a long, long time since the Phillies have had a midsummer month like this one. They picked a good time to do it because no matter what they do, and Charlie Manuel knows this, he was talking with us before us about the game. He's not overlooking Atlanta. He's just not going to overlook them. Atlanta's got a terrific pitching staff. But this is the best team in the East. I agree. Offensively, they have an answer for just about all your questions. Takes a split fingered fastball in the count three and two. All right. Darren Sutton, you're the former pitcher. If you're Dan Heron, you've got Chase Utley in the batter's box. You've got. Ryan Howard on deck and a 3 2 count. What are you throwing right here if you're Dan here? Throwing a split fingered fastball. I'm throwing a breaking ball. All right, trying to lock him up, see if you can get him looking. He did throw a breaking ball, it stayed high. If he gets it there, I think if he gets it there, he gets a strikeout looking. 
And he is a pitcher that gets a lot of strikeouts looking well above league average. Thirty two percent of his strikeouts are looking. I think that would have got him. Oh, I think there's I think honestly that Chase Utley was so fooled and locked up. He just couldn't swing at it. I think he was and, looking for the pitch yeah, I said and it just missed. So that's ball four and big Ryan Howard now with an opportunity to make a statement here against Dan here. There's where the homer went last night. Now it was a pitch that was in in amazingly enough and he hit it that way. Chip Bale saying get on over a little bit. Drew nearly behind the bag at second. Did he on a cut fastball. Yes he did. That's strike one. It's interesting listening to Gracie talk about the weapon used mainly against righties. But Dan Heron not fearful of using any of his weapons in any battle. And that's a good example right there. Surprised tower. Fastball runs away one and one. This is last night in the location. Yeah, that's a good pitch against most hitters. Ryan Howard loves the ball down and in and still so doggone strong able to still hit it 430 feet the other way. If you're going to come in on Ryan Howard. You need to go around belt high. Look that's the that. cutter. That's two to him. Yeah. And I think he's going against the grain that we've watched all year long. Almost the same area that John Garland was taken deep last night by Ryan Howard that location. But instead of a straight fastball that one had some dip of about four or five inches right over the top of his bat. Split fingered fastball way out front and down goes Howard. That acted almost as a change up as well. well Ryan Howard. Is a guy that will strike out. And if you're throwing pitches like that, my goodness, what a great split fingered fastball that was after some cutters, Darren, in on him to speed him up. He knew I really have to speed up, cheat a little bit to get to that cut fastball. Now you take a little bit out off of it, you throw the split finger. Good night. Not done yet, though. Yeah. Raul Ibanez. Breaking ball, strike one. Now these two have seen each other a lot. Not a lot of the hitters have, but Ibanez. 36 career at bats against Dan here and remember Abanez's his time in Kansas City and Seattle hitting 278 he has struck out nine times though against him with a homer. Oh boy cut fastball fouled it off his foot 0 oh, and two of the count. That ball cut in on Ibanez that got the front ankle. What a terrific pitch from here. So you watch him all the time. Uh huh. Scouting report. They watch him all the time. They're ready. They they've recorded all of his games. Uses that cutter primarily to right-handed hitters. Right. He knows that. That's true. He's playing that game. These are the world champs. Yeah, these guys. They start watching film at about one o'clock in the afternoon. The Phillies do. The O2. How do you lay off that? What a good pitch and a re an even better take by Ibanez. <laughs> yeah. He's grinding up there. I don't blame you, Raul. Only a great hitter can take that pitch. Love a redhead scorekeeping. Keeping score at the ball game. The one two. Another one. A split fingered fastball. Rarely does Dan Heron get strike three looking on a split. Daryl Daryl Cousins, the home plate umpire, not in the giving mood. Like Banya's full one tracks it all the way and who's that remind you of Pete Rose mm -hmm. track it all the way to the catcher's net. A couple of runners on. Fastball and he jumped on it as quickly as he could not ready for it to to the count. I've seen two split fingered fastballs one to a that he tracked the one you were talking about and the one to Howard and I'm thinking. That Danny may be jamming that baseball a little bit further in. In other words, slowing it down a bit. It's a touch slower than it usually is, it? is. acting almost as a split finger with a change up feel to it. 2 2. That's a cut fastball. It's down 3 and 2 the count. Runners off to the race. Well, these Philly hitters really making Dan Heron work. 21 pitches already here in the first inning. And this has been a grind of an inning. I mean a tough inning for Dan Heron. Whether he gives up a run here or not, it has been some kind of a tough inning for him. Well, they they had Jimmy Rollins napping, but neither middle infielder vacated. Well, Roberts is so darn far away, he's got no chance to get there. They're playing a Banyas to pull pretty dramatically on the infield. Now you really can't leave your post either if 
if you're a defender. Runners go, 3 2, lifted center field, well struck. Chris Young is on the move, still going, still going, he's got it. What a great battle that was between two stars, Ramirez and Aaron. Hope you're ready to work tonight, Danny. Boy, FreeCreditReport.com, out-of-town school board early. Oh. Prime spot for them tonight. Well, here you go. Mark Burley again working on a perfecto, a walk, and then a base hit followed. And so he carried it into the sixth inning. Of course, last time out, he was perfect. And a smile. that aren't span with a base hit there. A run driven in by Joe Maurer on the ball that Scott Pesetting would tell you. Maybe could have caught that ball down the line it went. FreeCreditReport.com reminds you to know your score. Diamondbacks with Stephen Drew, Ryan Roberts, and Justin Upton. We'll set the entire nine for you momentarily. 20th start of the year for Cole Hamels. And he goes to work with a fastball. That's strike one. Young man out of Southern California. Philly's number one pick in 2002. The reigning World Series most valuable player. To the count. Steven 17 hits since the All Star break. Nine extra base hits. More than anyone else, by the way, those nine extra base hits. And that's strike three. Let's take a look at the entire starting lineup. And it's brought to you by Southwest Airlines. It's a Drew, it's Ryan Roberts, and then it's just enough. To Mark Reynolds, Miguel Montero, Chris Young, Para, Tracy, and Dan Heron. All right, Ryan Roberts, much, much more successful against left-handed pitching this year and a chance to hit a pretty good lefty, though. No doubt about that. Well, he hit a pretty good lefty, and he hit it pretty well. Deep right field to the wall. Score of one to nothing on Ryan Roberts' second home run of the season. Right field. Oh, you don't really expect Ryan Roberts to hit a home run the other way in right center. Fastball up and down the middle, and he just uncoiled and deep into right center field. Ryan Roberts, some surprising opposite field power. Now, well, Roberts in his last five starts, seven for 20. Now, four extra base hits. Gonna drive the ball a bit, and especially loving lefties. Upton takes a pitch, a low strike. One and one the count. There we go. That's good to see. Ryan Roberts had some struggles in the field yesterday. Was still on base three times. You bet. 
He doesn't carry it into the next day. Allen ran in on the hands, Justin Upton. And in time for the out. Cole Hamels is a guy, obviously not overpowering, but a strike thrower. Throws hard enough, no doubt about it. Average fastball, 90%. That changeup, though, boy, he keeps you off the fastball. It makes 90 look like 95. Yeah, he's got an excellent changeup. And the one thing he does with his fastball is he locates it in and out. We saw right there with Justin up. He jammed him with a fastball in after a couple of pitches away. So he's got enough fastball. And if you get it to that spot inside, boy, he's tough. There's the change up for a called strike Darren Sutton. And if you're interested in numbers like that, I'd like to see what a pitcher throws. Look, is it a good website? It's fangraphs.com. It'll show you the breakdown. But then you need to bring a former major leaguer into your house to explain what it all means. I have Mark Grace to help me out with all those numbers. And you know what I'm uh, breaking down numbers with you, Darren. Well, you, you humanize them. You put them into baseball terms, and that's the best part about it. The 1-1. One, one. Shot. It was a change up, and again the challenge. We talked about it yesterday against Jamie Moyer, keeping those pitches fair. And that's what you do win. And that's what pitching is, Darren. And, and, and Cole Hamels does it so well. He just keeps a hitter guessing off balance. He has the ability to make balls look like strikes. And that guy has that same thing. He has the ability to make balls look like strikes. Mark Reynolds in the middle of a career high 11 game hitting streak. He's got 18 hits since the All Star break. And he's hitting 429. Those 18 hits, second highest total in the National League. Cole Hamels had something for him. Don't forget, he struck out against Jamie Moyer yesterday as well early. Then hit one off our stage and right. Is where he's hitting home runs all over the community. Mark Reynolds this afternoon, St. Joseph's Hospital, the Child Life Center. And you are the community, folks. You watch, you support, you buy tickets. And we know that there are bumps in the road and fears for your community. Mark Reynolds, part of this organization and a very important part of being a ball player or an employee of this team is doing that. Good for you, Mark. Right down the middle, strike one to Jason Worth. June 13th was his day, and we started counting homers then for Worth. He's got 13 of them since then. Albert Pujols, 14. They're one and two in the big leagues. As that one backs him out of there, one and one. Threw it there with a purpose, trying to make him move his feet. That one tried to double up on him, didn't get the call. Good effort there, but he missed inside. Two and one now on Jason Worth. He likes to get those arms extended. Got some big power the other way. So you can see Heron trying to crowd him. There's a cut fastball as he reaches out and he fouls it off. And that's 
what we talked about. He uses that cut fastball a lot to right-handers to get just that. Get him off the end of the bat or even swings and misses. Two and two of the count. Well, you've got your options now. That fastball popped up just a racer. Now in this case, Mark Grace, and you talked about it earlier, it was the walk to Utley. At this point with two strikes, I don't, sitting up here anyway, look for the curveball as much. Do you? Well, no, just because we know Dan Heron, and he's a guy that likes to use his breaking ball early in the count rather than late. It's not one of his put-away pitches. That is a cut fastball, a fly ball. He was struck for just reaching out and poking it. Goodness. And Chris Young has made the last couple of outs to end the first, and now here the first of the second. Hara, Young, and Upton in the outfield. Reynolds, Drew, Roberts, Tracy on the infield. And Miguel Montero back behind home plate. CY did a nice job ending that first inning. Roin looking stronger and stronger going back on the baseball. Still fighting it a bit coming in for whatever reason. The 1 0 to Pedro Feliz. Cut fastball. This is CY again ending the inning up and under that balcony as he raced out. Took a last peek and realized he had plenty of room. He made the play. Two and one the count for the former giant, Pedro Feliz. Let's talk about this guy and timely hits. Off the end of the bat. Feliz this year with runners in scoring position hitting 333. I tell you. You had the early beginnings of Benji Molina in San Francisco when he had moved there and Feliz on the same team. Those are guys that were always overlooked and always hurt you. Broke his bat. Gobbled up. And in time for the out. Got a good maple bat sign out there. We'll have to find at some point in the redhead section, and this is why, Mark. Yeah, the maple Catch bat, fortunately, it didn't go back at Dan Heron, but another weapon, a javelin, coming right back at a fielder. Unfortunately, it was away from everybody, but just another reason for me to get on my high horse and get rid of maple bats, please, before somebody gets maimed or killed. That fastball strike one. Carlos Ruiz finally hitting a little bit. Six for his last 19, two home runs, but the year as a whole has been a story of two seasons as he fouls that one off. I tell you, you go cutter away, and then that fastball in at 91, he had no chance at that pitch. No. 0 oh 2. The 0 oh 2. Just got a piece, but I think we found the sign, Gracie, to support there you. There we go. There it is. See if we can zoom in a little bit. Read that. Say no to maple bats. No Ash maple bats, bats only. Ash bats only there. Say no to maple bats. Look at that face. Yeah, look out. No kidding. That maple bat coming flying at you. That's a good, smart lady there. You know what else it is? What's that? It's a great home TV crew. Make a mention of a sign yeah. and they find it in that? one Look pitch. That. Maple bat. And that sign, I noticed that was signed by you and I, Darren. So. One more quick thought on that sign, if she can hold it there. I'm not sure if she is. Is he, I mean, is he eating malted chocolate malt balls or what? Is it peanuts? I'm trying to see what, what is he doing? He's just like enjoying he's the game. He's okay. just trying to enjoy the game. He's got bats flying on him. I like maple. It. I like it. Thank you. Thank you for that final shot. Big league sign. Oh boy. Just off the plate. Two and two. The count. Daryl Cousins. Brian Rungi, by the way. Mike Machlinski and Bill Miller. The men. In blue tonight. Though they wear black now. Two two.
obviously Miguel Montero has been fantastic and, and goes without saying his influence on our club, but uh, it doesn't mean we don't want Chris Snyder on this team or don't see him have, having a role. So I think, you know, the sooner we get Chris Snyder back, I feel like we're going to be a good team and, you know, he can help, he can help us win. Um, you know, but certainly the comfort level with Montero helps us in general, let alone whether or not Snyder comes back today or tomorrow or the next day. Said the manager of the Diamondbacks, A.J. Hinch, yesterday, Chris Snyder is back, activated from the disabled list. He can put the helmet on his head again in the big leagues. It's also good advice when you're out riding. Breaking ball and strike one. Lower back cost him some time. Luke Carlin worked hard up here to the... Did the team proud with his efforts. Option down to Triple A. Son of the Marine, as that one is up and away. One and one the count. So he's back from a little gimpiness, and Darren, I want to take an opportunity to give out a get well soon to a good friend of our show, Shelly Martin, suffering from a broken toe. Have you ever broken a toe? I've heard about it, never have. It is below average. It hurts. So she's suffering from a broken toe, and I want to give her a Quick, quick shout out, a dastardly beanbag accident. Best of luck, get better. Rollins fires. We talk about Chris Snyder with his back problems opening the door. This is what happened while Snyder was on the disabled. Wow. That is just doing it right there. The seven long balls, the 24 RBIs. And, and, I talked about it with Mark McClune in the pregame show, Darren, and, you know, A.J. Hinch's job as the manager of the Diamondbacks is to win as many possible games as he can, wouldn't you think? Yes. That's his job. Put the lineup out there that can win as many games as he possibly can and right now. He feels like Miguel Montero is the guy to be out there that's going to help him win the most baseball games right now. Well, in Snyder's absence, Miguel Montero helped him win a lot of baseball games. Well, you bet, and we don't want to lower expectations ever for this club. They've done it themselves with their play this year. This is a club that before Miguel was playing every single day, and look, a lot of other things happen as well, but they're one below. Now, one below, you don't call your friends and write home about it, but the game's prior 13 below. And so Miguel, and that's not a knock on Chris, it's just that he sees the day. The all you can eat seats. Put some ketchup on that baseball up there. Long way to hit a baseball. Just foul. That's because the, the pitch was to the inside corner. Tough to keep it fair, as you said, Darren. Right off the facing, as you said, of the all you can eat section. The one, two. Right back inside and right by Chris Young. That time up around the letters. Nine for 34 since the All-Star break. Young goes down a little bit over 270. Here's Gerardo Park. I'll tell you what, Gracie, that redhead section. They were hopping oh, tonight. Oh, man, they were loud. You keep an eye out, by the way. You see something you like, you let me know. I'm giving tickets. They'll go for free next time to the redheads. I love it. When's our next redhead? Do we know? That'll be the... We'll figure it out here. In August. Yeah, I'll be right there. Well, why didn't they ask me while I was out there? I don't know. You were out there signing autographs. By the way, the next evening that uh, we're all getting together is August the 11th. Oh, look at that. Boy, that's back when I had a little talent. Young Mark Grace. Good uh, pitch in. Two more nights this year. We need larger and greater crowds, a good crowd tonight. But August 11th, the Mets come to town, and then the San Francisco Giants. You make a lot of noise. They may be playing for a ton at that point, those Giants. That's a couple of big-time games there, too. You bet. Along with this one, the, you know, the reigning world champs, Cole Hamels and Dan Heron on a Redheads night. This is officially big league. That pitches away. It change up two and two the count. And the Mets, the Giants, those are good redhead games. Mm -hmm. Our friend Zeller, who we saw early on, he's out there all red hair. Nuts. Bouncing ball pitches in. 
play a little first base. Flips it on over to Cole Hamels. Five in a row sat down by Hamels. Dan Heron back out there. Writing you in, voting you in. You well, did thank interviews. Thank you so much, sweetie. You did interviews for the umpire show, but boy, your old teammate came and rubbed it in. How about that? He didn't do a doggone thing, and he wins an Emmy. You, you, you earned yours. But Matt Williams, uh-uh. I am still bitterly disappointed over that. Here's you the know good what? news. I'm very happy that that lady is feeling my pain. That's not currently, although he has been sleeping with it lately. His Emmy Award trophy. Right there by his bedside. Uh, that was for the show this past Saturday inside the world of Major League umpires. Holding the MLB permission granted to do the interviews that Gracie did, by the way. Did the sit down interviews yeah. with the umpiring crew. And, and Matt took all the credit and got the Emmy. I have some good news for you, though, partner. Some very good news. Fouled off. That show, uh -huh. Thursday night. Will be on again. The re air. Major League Baseball gave permission for a re air of that unique show involving the umpires. Good. So you can watch it on Thursday night. All your work, all your interviews. Uh, and, and Matt Williams taking all the credit for him. Yeah. Just not really, not really much justice around here. And, and the other thing, Darren, I gotta, I gotta admit, I'm, I'm a little bit disgusted with you, to be honest with you. I, I mean, see. you're a guy that. Seemed to always have my back. I did. As soon Except as you got back, I had your back. As yeah. soon as you returned. Okay. Yeah, that's starting to make sense now. <laughs> wow, good looking curveball. Hamill stakes in here and didn't like the call. That's a two strike curveball, though he threw it to mm -hmm. a pitcher. Now he's three and two. Hamill's putting a good at bat on him. That'll do it. Cole Hamill goes down on strikes. Four for 31 this year. As soon as we find out the time that will re air, if you missed it in a lot of you sneak out on Saturday nights. By the way, our key to the game, a very good one tonight Spinal Tap, Arrowhead, Brown and Brown, and Superstition Spring Chevy dealers. How? That is the key to the game. Something I don't want to have anytime soon. Tina Pope, by the way. Tina Pope. Uh -huh. Brought us that key to the game on our D backs booth Twitter page. Some, some, some back problems for Tina. Had to have a spinal tap. Oh, no. That has nothing to do with it. Well, I'm hoping you'll explain to me sometime. Are we going back to the. To you're, the, the you're the aficionado. To the faux uh, rock band? Yes, you're the aficionado. Classic movies and classic rock. You're. You're a little bit more experienced than I am. I don't go back quite that far. Oh, and Spinal Tap, one of the all-time great movies. Great band. I am told something to do with 
the amp maybe or something to do with the volume. Oh, okay. That's what I'm told. When you need that little push over the cliff, because that one's grounded to seven days. Ryan Roberts up with that one, and Jimmy Rollins is taken care of as well. So, remind us. Oh, are you talking about the amp? It, uh, the amp goes up to 11. Oh, yes. Instead of 10. And the questions were, you know, why does it go to 11? Well, when you need that little push over the cliff, it's one more. It's 11. And, and it's, it's one of the classic lines of that movie. Okay, but uh, is, uh, I know Shane Victorino's a big fan of the movie. That's why it's the, that's why it's the key to the game. No, we're not going to time it that right. That one is fouled off. Dan Heron, let's give him a little push over the cliff. These yeah, guys. Nice. My buddy Harry Shear right there. Dan Heron has 10 wins. He needs a little push over the cliff. Did you see the name of that album? <laughs> <laughs> so that is the key. It's 11. It's one more. Right there. Get him 11 wins. One more. The one, two. Just got a piece of it. <laughs> you like that, do you? I, I like the album. Oh, back in the day. Victorino, 389 since July the 3rd, 35 hits in his last 21 games. Yet hitless in this hits. series. Yeah, you bet. So far. Three ball belted deep right field. It's called. And that is a no doubter. He was ready for the fastball, opened up his hips, and scorched it. 14th home run allowed by Dan Heron this year. Of the 14, 12 of them, like this one, have been solo shots. Those don't beat you as much for Victorina, his eighth home run of the year. Well, a lot of times, these little guys, the guys that don't hit a whole lot of home runs like Victorino, these are the ones they will. The pitch is in. They got those short arms, and they can get to those balls inside. And boy, did Victorino get to that one. He crushed that hair and fastball to tie the ball game up. So now Chase Sutley looks at a fastball outside. Boy, I put the mood Chi Chi on that, didn't I? I said, right, wasn't even out of my mouth that he was hitless in the series. Boom. The 1 0. Give him a breaking ball there. This is going to be pitch number 60 from Dan Harris. These Phillies are really making him work for every out he gets. This was the trouble, I think, in his last outing. He went five and threw 98 pitches. Outside, two and one the count. Ryan Howard waits on deck. Your old teammate, Jamie Moyer, in there behind Jimmy Rollins. Well, what a job Jamie did last night here. Good pitch there. Waves over the top of a cut fastball. There he is. 46 years young. There was base runners everywhere, but none of them scored when Jamie was on the mound. Stand next to A.J. Happ, who's pitching tomorrow. And if you're a young left-hander who, by the way, is having a great season, you, you just stand right there. Mm -hmm. Boy, is that a great shot, isn't it? Almost like a father son game. And he is listening intently. Pointing out what Dan Heron's doing well, maybe what he thinks he's not doing well. One thing the Phillies are doing well, boy, they are making Dan Heron work. So many three ball counts today. Already a walk today, which is very rare for Dan Heron. Four three ball counts as well. That's unheard of for Dan Heron. Fouls it off. He's making them work. And he talk about J.A. Happ over there. At 26 years old. 20 years younger than last night's winning pitcher. Charlie Manuel's been talking about that since bringing his club into town about how fortunate he is to have guys like Jamie Moyer. Even Matt Stairs. 
as that one is outside. Let's listen to the manager talk about his leadership style, which includes delegating to the senior members in uniform. I definitely have some of those guys. I'm big at delegating uh, workloads too, you know, like especially with my staff. Uh, but my players, you know, like some of those guys, uh, I, I mean, they take that resp responsibility on because, they, you know, like that they know they can and, and, and they kind of got a great feel of when to do it. I think it. Uh, I think that's all part of having a good team, too. I think every team's got that, and I think it, uh, to be good, you have to have those guys, kind of guys. Well said, huh? Like Jamie Moore. Like Matt Stairs. I'll tell you what, right now, Jamie Moyer's got a little case of the Clay's about is working. He certainly does. That fastball on the corner. He's wearing out J.A. Happ, isn't he? Happ out of Northwestern. We'll see him work tomorrow. He's a smart kid as well. Smart enough to be standing there anyway. Yeah, the 0 2. Laid off a split fingered fastball there. That was the strikeout pitch on Ryan Howard in the first inning. Oh, there we go. Got the autograph. And he took care of that between innings. You're welcome. You're welcome. The one, two. Another split. Not interesting. Oh, look at the at bats these Phillies are putting on Dan Heron. We haven't seen that this year, Darren. You don't think At they woke all. up this morning too, knowing who they were facing and relishing the opportunity? Absolutely. Well, this is looking to be a well, an abbreviated outing for Dan Heron. I mean, at this point, as Utley goes, another foul ball. At this point, this is pitch number 70 coming up, and we're two outs into the third inning. This is looking more and more like a like a five, hopefully six inning game. For Dan Heron. Wow. And you got to give these Philly hitters an awful lot of credit. A solo homer's been in as far as scoring, but look at the number of pitches. Goodness. Runner goes on 2 2. It's fouled off again. Well, this has got to be frustrating for Dan Heron. Got to be frustrating for A.J. Hinch. And if you're a Philly fan or if you're a Philly player, you are loving the way things are going right now. 70 pitches already for Dan here. That's usually about the sixth inning for him. There's no doubt about that. As Danny this year, when you talk about efficiency, he has gone six or more innings, 19 of 20 starts. His last start was the shortest of the year, was five innings. Routing Dan Heron is shortening him to five and getting him to four. That's routing him. That one is belt. Deep around. But he swirls around and makes the play. That one knuckling on him. He did not square that ball up. The entire way knuckling. And Young is there.
Diamondbacks baseball brought to you by the top three power Chevy dealers in the Valley. Arrowhead, Brown & Brown, and Superstition Springs. And by Miller Lite. Great taste, less filling. South ball goes back to work. And fire strike one to Chad Tracy. Breaking ball, and that one is rolled foul. Taking a trip back in time, Chad Tracy with a nice memory against Cole Hamels. This, of course, in the middle of the summer last year. And that's a no doubter. Hamels had the last laugh as he beat the Diamondbacks and Brandon Webb in that game as the breaking ball is high, going seven innings. And it was an outing, folks. He had to scatter 11 hits, but he only gave up two runs. Bends at the knees and trots over to the bag after he makes the play. So now Dan Heron. We talked about Mark Burley having that perfect game, then no hitter, then shutout. Now Minnesota leading the White Sox 5 to 1 in the top of the eighth inning, so it ended up getting tougher. But Burley along the way set a Major League Baseball record with 45 straight batters retired. Last batter's face versus Baltimore. Then he went 27 against the Rays, 17 against the Twins. And that last batter against Baltimore makes it 45 in a row, making a major league record that his teammate Bobby Jenks set out of the bullpen in 07. And Giants hurler Jim Barr in 1972, 41 batters in a row, 45 straight batters retired. Well, it's this year. No, nope, no. Put a little pep in his step, I'll argue, as well. Well, even a pitcher can hit a hanging changeup, and that's exactly what that was. Dan here's a good hitting pitcher. You hang a changeup to anybody, and that's just a bolt right back up the box. Very nicely done there by Dan Heron, turning the lineup over. All smiles, able to help himself out. He knows he's got a long way to go to the finish line. Pitching wise, as that one is a strike over the outside. All year long, Heron has been near the top of the list of offensive pitchers in the big leagues. And we saw it coming. You've seen it coming. And Ryan Howard holding Dan Heron on with the left handed hitter, Stephen Drew up. That's a big hole to pull a ball through. Instead, it's popped up the other way. Top of the Diamondbacks dugout. But very interesting that they're they're electing to hold Dan Heron on. I wouldn't think he's going anywhere. He stood there an awful lot. It's the time you back up and try to take away the double. Play all the way back near the grass. As somebody like Steven drew up. But I just can't see the advantage right now of holding Dan Heron on, but. We'll see what happens. Steven reaches out and pokes it the other way. So with one out, back to back hits, and here is Ryan Roberts. Roberts, this is against the Pirates. After the ball, Graves, so look at this. That's a silent treatment. <laughs> and then tonight. Let's see. That's the difference. That's the difference between number one and number two. <laughs> Good reacts there, guys. Nice job. Steven Drew, by the way, extends that hitting streak. He continues to roll. And that one is in. What a pretty piece of hitting for Steven as well. That's his 18th hit since the All-Star break. That was a pretty piece of hitting, just flipping it over the shortstop's head. And giving Ryan Roberts a chance here with one out. Stevens went to 10, Marks is at 11. Oh, we got a change oh. up 2-0. Oh. Cole Hamill's been doing that to 
Right-handed hitters for a while. And you can see the disgust on Ryan Roberts' face. Golly, I can't believe I chased that pitch. Two and one the count. Even World Series MVPs continue to learn. That yeah. time he called through it for a called strike. And learn how to dabble it around with the soft stuff. He's a youngster out there. He's only 25, but he's pitching a little bit with the touches of the 46 year old that he watched pitch last time. A 2 0 changeup. And then zip a fastball upstairs right by him. That's the same guy that took you deep last at bat. That time, the MVP schooled the youngster. And against a guy like Hamels, if you overswing, you're in trouble. But when you keep it under control, you just take what he gives you. Your chances are a lot better. It wasn't the most beautiful thing, but at the end of the day, it was awfully pretty. Justin fly ball center field out front of that changeup. And again, wiggling right off the hook there is Hamels. And welcome back to downtown Phoenix Chase Field, the place to be tonight. But earlier today, Sliders, the place to be is Aflac bringing kids from Phoenix Children's Hospital to the game. A lot of these kids have spent time in the hospital and enjoying a great night out of the ballpark. Joined right now by Corinne Riley of Aflac tonight to ask us tonight's Aflac trivia question. All right, tonight's trivia question is: Affleck. Since 1969, name the four left-handed pitchers to win World Series MVP. Oh. Guys, she might have stumped you. Do you know the answer? Oh, boy. Well, we know one of them. We've yeah, been talking up. about him all night, and that would be Cole Hamels. We might try to help you out from out here. Oh, and I know, and I wouldn't have a World Series ring if it weren't for a co-MVP left-handed pitcher, and that's Randy Johnson. Oh, boy. Roll it. Big Mac will we'll love the help, though. Okay, yeah, well, now is I'm it, done. Is it okay if I give everybody out here uh, the two of your, your cell phone numbers? You guys mind texting? Uh, uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Go ahead and give them Go out. Ahead. They can right. send some texts in. And as we do that, that Corinne here with Aflac, what does it mean to have all these kids that have spent time in the hospital out at the game? It's just wonderful. It's really great to see these kids and their faces filled with joy. And it's a night out to have them with their friends and family and forget about what's going on from day to day and just relax. And, and we have a number of, of things to celebrate. Uh, some of these kids, actually, the cancer has gone into remission. And it's a night to celebrate. That's right. Right here um, with me, I have two girls who are actually in remission. And we're just thrilled. And that gives us one more thing to celebrate. So we're just absolutely thrilled to be here and thrilled to celebrate that with them. Thanks for letting us join in the celebration. Thanks for helping us out with the question. And uh, let's go. Let's cheer on the Diamondbacks to win out here, guys. Have any texts come in yet? I'm looking right now. You're a good man, yes. Grace. You're giving up that cell phone. 
Yes, as a matter of fact, uh, I think uh, is a uh, Mark. Is there a is there a young one out there named Lizzie? Lizzie, where's Lizzie? Lizzie's not, right here. Lizzie's not here right now. Oh, okay. We have a Bridget. Okay. Bridget. Okay. Bridget, did you send Mark a text? Yes. This okay. Bridget right here. Now, who did Bridget and, guess? And, you know, being as young as Bridget is, I'm I'm kind of surprised that she got, you know, that she remembers this guy. But uh, but her guess is is Steve Carlton. Uh, that's Bridget, sorry, your guess no? is wrong. No. Oh. Duck, gone. One and two, the count. Got it. That's another cut fastball. He threw him a couple of cutters that I don't know if they were by design up at the letters. A couple of them. Right fielder Jason Ward. You know what, Darren? Hello? Darren? Hello, it's Gracie there. Yes. Bridget just also sent me another text. Uh, she wasn't going to give up. And this is more her speed. Mark McClure, can you hear me? Evidently, he can't hear me. Okay. That one a mile high. Easy chance there for Chris Young. Jason Worth is here. Big Mac, you there? Yeah, yeah, we're here. Stephanie, okay, Bridget, Stephanie, no, you know what? Yeah. Bridget, Bridget sent me another text. She did. Yeah, and this one's more, you know, someone that's that's she would remember. She gets, she texts me, Tom Glavin. Is Tom Glavin? Tom, you got it right, Tom Glavin. Nice yeah, job. That's Way to go, Bridget. And Stephanie has been furiously sending texts over here. She I know. has. You know what? I, yeah. Darren, did you get Stephanie's? I did. I did. I don't think you got it. I don't think you got I it. Did. But. Uh, I was texting back and forth that I thought it was one person, Gidry, but she said, no, no, Darren, it's Frank Viola. She said in her, oh, very nice. good. Nice. Frank Viola, good call. Well done. Nice job. Great call. Where are y'all getting this? I'm so impressed. I kept, I kept trying to text her back. I said, it's Ron Gidry. Ron Gidry. She said, no, Frank Viola. So nice job, guys. That's all of them. That's all of them, and that's all for the Phillies. One, two, three, a much needed quick inning for Dan Hamm. The rowdiest part of the redhead section. Look at him. Look at him. Atta, atta, baby. Bringing it to the last four left handed pitchers to win a World Series MVP. Those folks have the catbird seats up top. In the redhead section, Frank Viola. Uh oh. Tom uh -oh, guys. Randy Johnson, and Cole Hamels. All right. Nothing big league about those two. Oh. Very disturbing, by the way. 
That one is low, 1 0 the count. Whack it out of here, by the way. If a D backs homer hits the Gila River Casinos, hit and win sign here in the fourth inning. A lucky fan watching tonight wins a jackpot of $550,000. That's not going to do it. A pitch in. By the way, the jackpot goes 10 grand a night. Steven Gustafsson, Steven Gustafsson, you are playing for the $550,000. WinHela.com or Gila River Casinos putting this together tonight. All right. What else we got? Reynolds over on a two. good roll. And so is Cole Hamels. We're getting what we expected, Darren. We're getting a pitcher's duel. Cole Hamels been. Extremely economical only 45 pitches into his evening Whereas Dan Heron running up on 80 oh, That's real one head there No wig on that one. No, no That one is fouled off Oh and to the count on the fly there? I couldn't tell. They're, they're acting like it was. That's a bouncing ball and a foul ball. Low Bundy. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, what do we got? Oh, yeah, that's a contract. Yep, yep. That's definitely a contract yep. right there. Four tickets down Rump there. Rope. Yep, that's a contract. Yep. Congratulations, young man. You will receive sometime soon. Four tickets. That one bounces away. Ruiz looking to block it up. A great play, a barehanded play. Life and limb being risked over the rail. So that contract, good thing. Four tickets. Good seats down below us. And then 30% off of the team store. Yep, contract. That's worthy of a contract. What a great grab. There it is. Signed by team president, CEO Derek Hall. We're reworking those deals to make them official. They're officially signed by the CEO. Mm -hmm. But they're chosen by the broadcasters. Yes, and that's Is that a great, correct. He he and his boss Ken Kendrick kind of fostered the idea, and uh, we took it and just ran crazy. We have not signed a multi-year deal yet. That one belted. Center field. It's down off the end of the bat. And the play is made out there. Hey, don't forget, get tickets now to sit in the all you can eat section at Chase Field. It's family friendly and it's on the suite level just below the St. Joe's Sandlot. For $30, you get an inside diamond level ticket plus all your favorite food. Here's the deal hot dogs and popcorn and Pepsi and chips. 602 514 8400. The all you can eat section. A lot of folks enjoying that tonight. Imagine some folks opting for that now more than 4,000 in the walk up. Mark Grace to see Dan Heron work against the defending world champs. He's a ticket Pretty good seller. crowd tonight. Pleased with this. Nice going all you walk ups as well. Back to back breaking balls. Haven't seen many from Hamels tonight. One and one. That changeup is high. Two and one the count. Oh, here's your Emmy. There it is on the right. There's the nice. Emmy you want. Thank you so much, guys. Out front lifts it. And it's a souvenir. Two and two, the count. One, one, our score. Glad to have you with us tonight. We're running Mark McClune all over the place. He's earning his keep tonight, isn't he? He's Mark Grace, and I'm Darren Sutton. And you, we trust that you to this point, only two days into your work week, are having a good week. There's a lot of kids out at the stores this morning. I was out running around, school shopping. It's on the mind of you mm -hmm. youngsters. 
That one is low. Three and two the count. Still time though you youngsters make your way out to the ball yard. The next couple of months of the well, season. Less than two weeks before school starts. Yeah. Yep. On the next home stand. And Young goes down on strikes. 0 for 2 with a couple of strikeouts. Oh, there's your Emmy. Oh, there we go. Right in. Thank you, honey. Well, it's changing the all-new Fox Fantasy Football. More customizable features, new ways to play. Log on to FoxSports.com on MSN to join the next generation of fantasy football. Dan Heron goes back to work against Carlos Ruiz. First pitch popped up and in the seats it goes for a souvenir. Easy now. He Looks like they're beating on a Philly fan. Wow. Uh oh, they it, might come help. It, it maybe choke them. The 0 1. Boy, good oh, pitch. Goodness. Dan Heron saying, huh? He's going to take a walk behind the mound. Can't say I blame him. Ruiz 11 for his last 72 against right handed pitchers. As he fouls that one off. Oh, we had an unbelievable and he's play. Kid. He's holding the kid. One of the best plays the play. you'll ever see. We got right another there. contract. Contract time. Four more tickets. And he's kid, holding his son. Kid in one hand, oh. grab on the other. That oh. is one of the better grabs you'll ever see, folks. Oh, oh man. That one is to right field, Justin. This is an easy here. grab compared to that one. Oh, my goodness. Kid in the oh right my arm. Goodness. The barehanded grab. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it sure is, honey. That sure is. And the kid gets it. That's that just made my night right there. How about that play? How about that play? Breaking ball low and two the count to Cole Hamels. Rob Weinheimer will be over there soon. He'll be over there. He's already over on this side. He's part of the in-house entertainment runs the show here and he has been hand delivering contracts. Doing a fine job. Bring your glove to the ball game folks if you don't know the story it'll be handed out you make a nice play. He didn't bring his glove. He had his kid. And he still made the play. The 2-2. 
Oh, I just missed. And three and two the count. Now it's and Dan he's, Works. He's going to take another walk. Feels like he might be getting squeezed by home plate umpire Daryl Cousins. Hamill's making him work. And these Phillies are really putting some at bats on Dan Heron. That was pitch number 92. Three two. Slap Fallon down the line and goes, and it's a foul ball. You can see our quest high speed internet, high speed pitch, top velocity, very similar. In an eight pitch at bat, finally gets something he can handle and drives it in the left center field. Chris Young, no chance of grabbing it. A couple of hops, hits the wall. And Phillies going to turn over their potent batting order. Dan Heron got a real edge now as he throws pitch number 95. It's a breaking ball and it's a strike. Aaron do up third next inning. He'll be just fine. And another inning under his belt. He's got to get to work though as that one bounces in there one and one. Yeah, I think right now he's not worried about where he's hitting. Next inning. Nine of 18 batters, Gracie. Nine of 18, six or more pitches in their bats. That's hard to do against Dan Heron just because there's been so many strikes this year from him. Boy, they have really done a job on him. Look at all those pitches just off the plate. They're not chasing anything. Very impressive. All this work and he's given up a one run and three hits. All three again. These pitches all just missing. They're balls, but they're just missing. And these Phillies, boy, they are impressive. Three and one the count. A three one breaking ball and it wasn't exactly what he wanted. He but it there. didn't need to be on three and one if you just throw something besides a fastball up there. You're going to surprise the hitter and even though it was a hanger. I think just the element of surprise kept Rollins from squaring it up. Oh ground ball Steven Drew. Come on Jimmy. Boy, he had gotten the second out. And Drew, the dependable Stephen Drew, allows his counterpart to reach. Well, we saw the Diamondbacks give these Phillies opportunities last night. And it was about this time of the game. Just that alone right there is enough for everybody to be safe. Instead of two outs and a man on third, you're now sitting first and third with one out. And the flying Hawaiian Shane Victorino going to try to give the Phillies the lead. That one hurt. Breaking ball strike one. He got a fastball in earlier. He sat and spun on it right out of here. Shane has only rolled into two double plays this year. Two. I would imagine Jimmy Rollins going to try to take the double play out of order here. Maybe try to steal second base. Instead of two outs, there's one. The pitch. A ground rule double. 
Victorino with a bullet down the line. See if we can see it. Well, I'll tell you what. Now that looks like a foul ball there. Brian Rungi having to get out of the way of it. That's fan interference down there, but AJ Hinch going to have a conversation with Brian Rungi. Explain to us, Gracie, what they're looking for here. Help us. You stood by those umpires a lot. Well, he's asking Brian Rungi what he saw. I'm sure Rungi's saying it hit the the white of the line. Tough to tell there. Just tough to tell. Hit the chalk in front of the bag. That looks like a foul ball to me. As it sails by the bag, yeah. it's, it's that looks clearly like a foul, foul ball. AJ Hinch going to lose this battle. He's going to make a trip to the mound. Yeah, that looks like a foul ball. A tough call. There's no doubt. We've gotten inside the heads of these umpires. We've learned a lot from them, but that looked like it hit, as we say, right in front and then spun off to the, as we're looking out at the bag, to the right if you're looking in, to the left of the bag from the outfield. Well, aren't these Phillies amazing, though, when you give them an extra out or you give them a big break? They did it for three runs last night in the sixth. When this happened. Couldn't make the play, the bomber, no double play. Run scores. There's a double play ball, isn't it? Sure it is. Not that little bobble right there. Run scores. And here they go again tonight. The Stephen Drew error opens the door, and boy, when you open the door for these guys, they gladly step right in. Infield comes just about all the way in, all but drew it short. He's a couple of steps back. Chase Utley takes away. That has been a theme for Utley. Utley has walked twice. We have told you Danny averages about one walk per nine innings this year. Chase Utley is the first player to walk twice in a game this year against Dan Heron. It wouldn't surprise me at all if he becomes the first player to walk three times. Because you got a base open. You got Ryan Howard on deck. They go after. Oh, way. Another miscue by the Diamondbacks. Dan Heron did his job, his defense unable to do so. Well, this is just Taylor Mann. Su surprised that uh, it looked like the. Wow, he is way inside the line there. Well, no call. I guess if the ball doesn't hit you, it's not interference. It's just tough to tell. You're just taught if he's right in front of you, go ahead and just throw it right through him. And I would imagine that's probably what happened to Tracy there. He just saw the runner there and threw it over the top of him rather than right through him. You're taught if he's going to be there, just hit him right in the chest with it, and it'll be an out. That throw sails over Montero. Boy, the Diamondback defense letting down one of their starters here again tonight. Two errors in this inning. Three to one the score. That one is fouled off. And into the seats it goes. 0 and 2 the count. Danny has now thrown 106 pitches. Utley was almost still in reaction mode, by the way, of that ball being hit. It's not as if he got to the runner's box, which is well up the line, and stayed inside that line. He had a reaction. He took a look out at the base runner, a little bit frustrated. By the time he pulled himself back together, there was a ball sailing at his head. Very different than when you get Grace about three steps shy of the bag and you're right. still way in that line. That's where that runner's path begins up the foul line. One and two the count. This will see the second line there. That's yes. really where they're watching you more closely, correct? Yeah, you're you're allowed to, to get out there a little bit before that. 
And another good split finger taken by the Philadelphia Phillies. So a double by Hamilton, an improbable double with one out. An error allowed Rollins to reach. Victorino, a very close ball, looked foul, but still a good at bat double. Then another error. Cut fastball, it's in. Three and two, the count. You can see it, but that that's really a moot point where he is. You're taught as a first baseman, and that's it. Just throw it right through him. Right at it. Throw it right through him. If he's in the way, if you hit him with it, you're going to get the interference call. That's exactly right. And if the ball's coming at him as hard as you can throw it, he'll get out of the way. 3 2. Over the top. Runner goes. He'll hold it. The second out. And about in front of a split fingered fastball. Howard has flied out and struck it a couple of times. Now Raul Ibagi. I think they're going to put Ibanez on and load the bases. Take their chance with Jason Worth. Three and oh the count now ball four. So Ibanez is on. And the last batter that Dan Heron will face in this ball game is Jason Worth. Let's hope that he's up to the task. And more importantly, unfortunately, in this inning, his defense is up to the task. And he's trying to get about his sixth out of the inning. This has been a familiar story with this Diamondback club. Eight grand slam home runs this year hit by the Phillies. That's a cut fastball at strike one. Six different players. Howard has three. Ibanez, Worth has one. Victorino, Feliz, and Rollins. Eight. The 0 1. In. One and one to count. Game with one out, Cole Hamels double. That's where it all started in the left field. There to make the play. Couple of close calls, a couple of miscues, a very ugly. Event.
with some great plays tonight at the ballpark. Mark McClune standing by with Shane and Gunner Gift. And, and Shane, a great play last inning. We're taking a look at your catch. You're now world famous and also an honorary member of the Diamondbacks organization. Here's a contract. What were you thinking as the ball was headed your way? Uh, not to drop it. And my wife told me to make sure I caught it. So I caught it. So. And don't, I don't drop it. the baby also. Yeah, and don't drop the baby. <laughs> and uh, I didn't. I did both. So I caught. I caught the ball, and the kid didn't go over. So we're good. Well, congratulations. There's the contract. Don't drop the ball or the contract over the railing. And, and you know, you, we thought you might uh, be good at catching baseballs, guys. The uh, the baseball coach here at Mesquite High School in Gilbert. Ah, oh, that's great. Congratulations, coach. That's wonderful. Nice job, Mark McClune over there. How about that? That one is fouled off. Yikes. He'll walk it off. An interesting exchange between the inning. As Dan Heron walked down to the end of the dugout, he is due up third in this inning, and his pitch count mighty high, but he's trying to state his case to stay in the game. You want to stay in, huh? Huh? Looks like he, he may have convinced him. 117 pitches. Owen to the count. Three to one the score. Well, he's one for one today. Go ahead and let him take a whack at one. Bouncer, Utley on the kicks. Chase makes the play and in time for the out. Para is 0 for 2. And hops out and hops into the on deck circle. Here's Chad Tracy. Three to one the score. Tracy trying to get something going with Heron out front. Waiting his chance behind. Him. I'm sure Chad would love an opportunity to make up for the his miscue on defense. That's a good pitch right to the outside corner there from Cole Hamilton. Tracy goes down on strikes and a couple of outs in the inning. Hey, don't forget, start planning early for the 2011 All Star game at Chase Field as an All Star gets ready to hit. All D back season ticket holders have the opportunity to purchase All Star summer ticket packages based on their priority number. To become a D back season ticket holder today, 602 462 4600. And you can also visit dbacks.com. Dan takes strike one again for Dan that pitch count 117 as it bounces in there. Why Dan has thrown 122 pitches in a game that's his high. He's going to surpass that tonight. Bouncing ball to short. He's erased. Will step aside. Well, that is eight in a row set down by Cole Hamels. I would imagine time to go back to work.
If you're just joining us, let us summarize what has occurred. Shane Victorino leaned on a baseball and got it out of here. That was in the third inning. It was scoreless to that point. Then the Diamondbacks helped out the Phillies quite a bit. An error there by Stephen Drew in the fifth. Chad Tracy coming home. And another miscue. And a run scores as we take a peek up top. Our APS rooftop solar cam reminding all of you if you're able to install solar panels on the roof of your home and your APS green home stand solar tip. Set your water heater to 120 degrees. Visit APS.com for more information. So basically what occurred at 117 pitches is that Dan Heron thought that he might be the best pinch hitter for himself, and he talked A.J. Hinch into it. Hinch went with Heron to hit for himself, and he's done. He's done. We thought maybe he was staying in the game and talked himself into more work, but he hasn't. Well, Zabata's going to come in and try to keep the Philly bats right where they are, keep his team in the ball game. It yeah, Dan Heron has more hits than any pitcher in the National League, so A.J. Hitt said, ah, go ahead. We'll save the rest of the boys for later. So the line for Dan Heron, he goes five innings, gives up four runs, or four hits, three runs, two earned, three walks, five strikeouts, 117 pitches. The Arizona bullpen in the last three games has worked eight innings, given up nothing with regard to runs. And four hits. There's about a promptly falls behind three and zero oh to Pedro Feliz. Three and one the count. Please, it's just two twenty two against lefties. Much better hitter against righties. And there's ball four to start the inning off. So Feliz is on in front of Ruiz. Catcher Carlos Ruiz. Carlos flied to center field. And then flied to right field in the fifth inning. Change up there stays I want to know the count. And no Stottlemyre going to make a trip. He's going to come out and talk to Zavada. Maybe sees his left hander out of rhythm a little bit. Try to give him a little advice. Try to get him to throw some strikes. About his last three outings he has not been scored upon. It's a funny thing with Clay. Left handed hitters are hitting over 300 against him, nearly 360. Righties below 200. See if he can roll up a ground ball. And I think that's the reason why that righties are. Struggling so much more against him. It's that pitch right there. The change changeup. Up. Fastball at 87. Two and one the count. Cole Hamels waits on deck. All three again. So Zavada having a little trouble throwing strikes. You need to get wild at the bottom of this Philly order. Oh boy, the top of the order just continues to bring it. Fly ball, well struck up to North back. He's tracking to the wall. And he is there making the play for the out. It was Hamill's double that really got things going, and it was Hamill's left arm that really got them going. Brad Lynch got the last out of World Series title, and the most valuable player is Cole Hamels. Look at what he did in the postseason last year. Golly. What a stud. Let's see if he's bunting or swinging. He's bunting. Not very well. 
Zavada an easy chance there. That redhead section. You got to get him going out there, Gracie. Well, I hadn't had much to cheer about, so you might as well get him going. Come on, folks. Come on now. Let's go. They've been Let's moping around yeah, out there all whoop night. it up out there. Let's go. Come on, guys. Hey, by the way. A lot of ball game left. The Redhead yes. walk up alone. Yes. 200 fans. Right on. The redhead section oh, alone. Oh, man. Well, we know they're studs. Jimmy Rollins will turn around and go right-handed for the first time tonight against Zavada. There they are. Redheads are plenty. Come on. Come on, folks. Get a little fired up out there. High fly. Nice bounce back by Zavada after a leadoff walk. Boys, give him something to cheer about. Plays worked up. They're worked up. Come on. Come on. Give him something to cheer about. Let's go. AT&T, the nation's fastest 3G network, AT&T, your world delivered. Matt, Derek, and Mike back in the tape room doing a great job. Come on, we need it turned up. And he turns it down. Isn't that the way it goes, trying to get some runs? A changeup for strike one. Perfectly executed to jump ahead. You talk about pitch count, ground ball. Phillips. Ryan Howard looked like it crawled up on the heel of that glove. That's just one of those where you just take your eye off the ball. Flat out is an easy hop, a big hop for Howard. He just takes his eye off the ball, kicks it, and it's all over. Let's see if the Diamondbacks can take advantage. Well, the Phillies have taken advantage of everything the Diamondbacks have given. Let's see if the Diamondbacks can return the favor now as Ryan Howard kicks one to start the bottom of the sixth. That one is in 1-0 and oh, the count to Ryan Roberts. He's been the offense tonight a solo home run in the first. Diamondbacks only have three hits. Change up on one and oh, one and one. This is in the first. The 
one one. Just in. So he goes soft away, tantalizing. Bolt over the inside, trying to grab the corner. Hamill has thrown three pitches or less to 11 of the 19 batters he's faced tonight. He's gotten decisions. Mighty rip at a fastball there by Ryan Roberts. Here's thinking of hitting home run number three on the season. The 2-2. Two -two. Out. 3-2 and two the count. How do you send the runner here, Darren Sutton? To stay out of the double play. Mm -hmm. Or do you keep him where he is? I keep him. I send him. All right. Totally and completely locked him up. Had him looking for something else. What a pitch. Yeah, that's pretty safe to say. He was looking for a fastball. He got a really a hanging change up there. And he just got absolutely locked up. And he'll take a trip back to the dugout and leave it for Justin Upton and friends. Upton now 8 of 21 on this homestand with four extra base hits. He flied to center field. He's also grounded out to second. Just off the plate at 89 miles an hour. Lefties. It's just 231 against Cole. The righties 306. And that's the third time through the order this year. It's been a 361 opponent's batting average. Well, that's the good news. Let's see if the Diamondbacks can continue the onslaught here the third time around. Yeah. Justin Upton is a perfect 10. He's number 10. I get it. I like he's that. also a very handsome lad. Only a lot of females out there think he's a perfect 10. Another one just missed. Been a tight zone tonight behind the plate for Daryl Cousins. Is that his tradition? That is his MO. He is a he's what you call a, a hitter's umpire. But he's consistent. Stay in the course. He's been doing it for almost 30 years now. Just jammed Justin Upton with that fastball. All I can do is foul it off. A 25 year old left hander facing a 21 year old slugger. Features bright in this game of baseball. Popped up right side. He may just take it. He may just take it. To get away from Utley. We had to watch it the whole time. But we were seeing up here, maybe Drew just didn't see it. You could tell that as soon as it got up in the air, it was going to find the grass. Steven didn't see it as clearly. Yeah, that conservative base running. Really, that's that's pretty much a base hit all the way. Utley nowhere near it. Steven Drew may have been able, if he took off right away, may have been able to get first to third. But as it is, a little bat handle base hit for Justin Upton and a couple of base runners now for Mark Reynolds. And just like that, the Diamondbacks have to go ahead and run at the plate in Reynolds, who has 27 long balls this year. See all the work that Cole had to do last year. And one of the reasons it took him a while to get his engine cranked, and he missed some time. And struggle. Big, big chance for Mark. Wow. This is last night, a slider away. Well, right now, he'd love just a, maybe a base hit or a double. 
Oh boy, he got a fastball down the middle. He was beat again. He struck Mark out back in the first inning on a fastball. Then Mark fly to left in the fourth. He's riding that 11 game hitting streak, a career high. A lot of room in right center field. So they'll pitch him in. Oh, he missed his spot, but he got away with it. Ruiz sitting right in underneath the hands of Mark Reynolds. Hamels went right down the middle with it. Lovely wife and uh, a little move. The O2. He was out front. He cheated a bit and could not keep it fair. Well, when the team's hot, those balls go foul. The Phillies are red hot. That ball just foul. That would have tied up the ball game. But yet, earlier, there was a ball that skipped over the bag at first. Very close. Could have been called foul. It was called fair. Hit by the Phillies. And you're hot. So does he get a change up here, folks? Or is it another fastball? That was a change up there. That's I right. think he's going back to the fastball. Well, he went with the change up. Reynolds had a good rip at it, fouled straight back. Game 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 you bet. Another 0 2 pitch. Out. Did you see how far Ruiz was sitting? He was sitting a good foot at least off the plate. He's chasing everything else. Let's see if we can get him to chase way out. Nothing doing. Look how far he's sitting outside, and that's right where Hamels threw it. The 1 2. Well, they're having a good battle. A couple of young studs, Hamels and Reynolds. Power on power, good stuff here. And he still really hasn't, with regard to the count, gotten the upper hand, but he keeps getting second and third and fourth chances. The ninth pitch of this at bat about to come home. The one two going up the ladder, and they got it there. It looks so good to Mark Reynolds, and he comes up empty. And that's the guy who likes the ball down. Once he chases above the belt, it's tough for Mark to catch up with those. And that's right where Hamels live. You see where Ruiz wants it. That is right where, where Hamels delivers it. And it's right by Mark Reynolds. Just classic matchup right there. And now with two outs, Miguel Montero. 0 oh for 2 tonight. On the outside corner. Well, Owen won the count. Pitch. He can pitch, boy. Montero, 11 for his last 27 with runners in scoring position. Four doubles and a homer. He's facing a tough one, though, here. Broke his bat. Out towards short rounds. Shoots it on the cross. Cole Hamels just got out of the mess.
Mark in the box inviting you. And well, you, Mark Grace, to think outside of the box. Well, let's let's think. Was this on purpose? Was this veteran base running here, or was this just merely being the well the wrong place at maybe the right time? You can see there. It looks to me like he's just protecting his face right there. And I just think that was happened to be in the way of the throw, and Chad Tracy's been taught. Throw it right through him. It's just like uh, when a when a runner's bearing down on you on a double play ball, Darren. That shortstop or second baseman's taught to drop down side arm. Love that. And make those guys get out of the way of that throw. And if they don't get out of him, if they don't get out of the way of it, it'll hit them in the coconut. And that's interference. It's a double play. So it's the same thing any other. You're not trying to hurt Chase Utley, but by the same token, you got to make him get out of the way. Scott Schoenweiss going to come in, take his turn. Clay Zavada through a scoreless top of the six. Here's Schoenweiss for the set. Oh, and won the count. Switch hitter batting right hand and now lifts it foul off of Scott Schoenweiss earlier this year. I'll never forget it. And this is similar. Very different, but you think about where it's similar is uh, how both of them, Utley and Eckstein, have that kind of guile on the base path. I agree with you. I think Utley was just reacting and re watching the play and then was like, boy, I better get out of the way. David Eckstein, you remember that flew out to right field? Trotted about five steps out of the box, flipped his bat right out where the throw would have come. Left his bat just out there where maybe the ball short hop. Well, yeah. There's all kinds of tricks of the trade, and I'm sure Chase has been taught all of them. I think in that one, though, I think he was I just, agree. He just happened to be in the way. It's a hit for Victorina. And, and that's a good effort there by Chad Tracy, but that's also a ball that he needs to go to first base on because Ryan Roberts, the second baseman, is right there. And that, it's, a, it's a good play by Tracy, and it's a good aggressive play. But you have to know where your second baseman is, and your second baseman's right there for the play. And Victorino, Victorino just easily beats Schoen Weiss over to first base, and that can't happen. That cannot happen. A a batter should not be able to run 90 feet before a pitcher can run 60 feet. I don't care if it's Carl Lewis. And it did there. And we used to see it happen a lot more, I think, than it does now with Doug Davis. He'd fall off as a left hander. He didn't let that happen as much anymore. No, and also, like I said, it, Chad Tracy, that was a good aggressive play. But he's before that ball's hit, he's got to know where Ryan Roberts is. He's got to know. That that ball is right to the second baseman and he can go to first base and it would have been an easy out. So once again, it's not an error, but it's a defensive miscue. Well, there's some history, huh, folks? Remember, Scott pitched for a while with the New York Mets. So, Jay Sutley, he's seen that man trot out of the bullpen at the old Shea. Citizens Bank Park, the 1 0. Hit him. Tried to come in with the fastball. And so, with a 3 to 1 score, and really the need to keep it right there, Scott's in some hot water. Ryan Howard now facing. Scott Schoenweiss. There's a strike. Setting him off right down the middle. It's been a tough go of it for Scott of late. And the numbers starting to stack up. Since June the 7th, he is now, or June the 6th, the 0 1. Runners go. Swung around. Throw down. 
And a double steal. What a great play by Mark Reynolds to save a run. Goodness sakes. Sean Weiss fell asleep on the base runners. Montero, poor throw. What an amazing play to save maybe two runs by Mark Reynolds. So the infield now comes in. 0-2 the count. Trying to add on. Boy, you want to keep it right here if you can. Just got a piece of it. Scott in his last six appearances has gone three and two thirds innings, given up eight hits and seven earned runs. And these Phillies, boy, they have shown. If you make a defensive miscue, boy, do they punish you. The 0 2. Got him out front with a slider, and so Schoenweiss continues to enjoy a lot of success against Ryan Howard. Right, with some fastballs in to speed up the bat of Brian Howard. Really takes a lot off the breaking ball. Way out in front of it was Howard. So one big out. But another tough hombre stepping in the box in Raul Ibanez. Infield remains in. Pitches low. One and oh, the count. Oh, good breaking ball there to the outside corner for strike one. Outside. Not interested. Boy, this bunch. You better really be creative to get him to chase. Masters wants him to fill his pen there. Not listening. He's got his redhead on, though. Slider. Oh, boy, didn't get the call. Goodness. Three and one the count. Pretty good pitch there. Scott's faced Ibanez 13 times. Raul is three for 13 at 231 average. And I would imagine this will probably be Scott Schoenweiss's last hitter. Let's see what he goes with. Three and two, the count. Got the fastball where he wanted it on the inside corner. Ibanez hit it hard, but he couldn't keep it fair. Banez is now in 19 consecutive road games. I mean, a monster role he has been on away from his hitter friendly ballpark, interestingly enough. Infield stays all the way in the 3 2. He walked it. So a single, a walk, double steal, a strikeout, and now a walk. And the tough times continue for Scott. Trying to keep it right here. Maybe pull a rabbit out of their hat. They're down by a pair. We'll see what Juan Gutierrez can do.
talk about is the event of an at bat, like an at bat, and how much how important that is. And he's uh, he's just uh, he's got such a good spirit to him, and and understands the competition side of the game that uh, it's about the pitcher batter confrontation. And he he preaches that he he preaches good at bats. He preaches uh, you know a certain attitude in the box and a certain swagger in the box, and you see it show up in his players. I mean, He managed that man that he's managing against along the way. Late in AJ's career. The event of the at bat, the matchup. Well, they've had a lot of good at bats tonight. Well, you would hope everybody preaches that to have a good at bat every every time. Well, these Phillies, they just find a way to. Even if you're. Throwing up a zero like Dan Heron was, they find a way to really make you work hard. Hence, the good at bat. Even though there were a lot of outs with Dan Heron out there, they made him work so hard he was only able to get through five innings, and now it's turned over to the bullpen. And Juan Gutierrez is called on, try to get out of a mess here with the bases loaded, one out. And Jason Worth, he has 62 RBIs. Slider and another one oh, and it's dear. fouled off both of them have hung up a bit that one more than the first one. Oh, 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 oh dear. Oh and two. That was the definition of a hanging slider right there boy. Three to one the score. First one to get me over you could call it a hanger that one. You're lucky when they throw it back to you. You're lucky when it's fouled off. But it's not a souvenir. Another one. Ground ball. Steven Escalita's feet. Can he get it out of time? Nope. He made a great diving play. And I don't know with Worth for a big guy running well if they would have turned it. He certainly saved a run with that diving play. A second run, albeit. Another run scores. It's 4-1. to one. The dive to the left. And then a little trouble getting it out. And Jason Worth runs way too well once you get the, the hesitation right there. That was the end of it. I threw him three sliders in a row. The last one was much better than the first two. You bet. But yet it still netted the RBI ground out. Well, the Phillies take advantage of another defensive miscue. Bouncing ball to Drew. Flattened out on him. He stayed with that one nicely. Another run for the defending world champs. They lead it by three. And this is the fourth this season. I'm with Ray. You've been to not only all four this season, but but every Redhead night in history. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And what makes it so special? I just love the intensity and the loud. I love to get the fans into the game. 
and it just drives me nuts. I can't wait for this night. Did you know there were a couple of Philly fans? In fact, there's a guy wearing a Chase Utley jersey. I hope you're going to chase him out of here. Yeah, I tried, but, you know, I'm still a fan, so they got to come, too. You know, you can't kick everybody out, but... Well, way to support. And by the way, later on tonight on Quest D-backs Live, Cullen Maxey, the D-backs Vice President of Baseball Operations, uh, will be by. So we'll talk to him. And uh, also, uh, we got more Redheads, guys. So uh, let's get this win done. We'll talk to you in a bit. Well, one can only hope. And there's something to cheer about out there. Meantime, it's a lot. Well, it's a lot later. It's nearly midnight in Philadelphia, and they're cheering. They're staying up late. They're going to be. Wiping the sleep out of their eyes because they wanted to stay up and watch Cole Hamill's deal. Yeah. They're loving life because he has certainly been doing that. Just four hits tonight. He pitched around an error in the last inning. So far, very good. Wow. Four walks, four hits, eight punch outs. Goodness. He comes as advertised, doesn't he, Darren? He certainly does. As that one is popped up a mile high, Lee stays with it, and a nice play made there by Pedro Feliz. He ends up making a nice play, and I think, unfortunately, one of our favorite young ladies fell on her wallet, but I think she's okay. Little stumble back up, back up, chair grabbed her. So one out. Now once that ball gets over the rail there, you don't get it if you're a fan. It's oh, gotta yeah. be in it the, won't be fan interference. You know? It'll be contract. That's a good point. Oh, Philly fan, D backs fan. Ah, it's quite all right. Come one, come all. We lead the league in love, Darren Sutton. Down to a knee with the drop to the bag. We certainly do, Gracie. We certainly do. Let's take a ride out to our Ride Now Power Sports pool here in Chase Field at our pool cam. Oh, some swimming going on. Having a good time out there. Wow, look at that. Yep, you got yourself a baseball. Yep, you're on. There we go. As that one is away, 1 0 the count to Chad Tracy. There they are. Hey, folks. Hey, good to see you. There we go. Hey there. Hi. Hello? Hello. 2 0 the count to Chad Tracy. Cole Hamels last year, we told you, on July the 13th, beat the Diamondbacks. That is a strike. Beat Brandon Webb. Won seven innings, gave up 11 hits, two runs. Won six to three. Last time out, he beat the San Diego Padres. Jack Tracy up the ladder, goes J. Roll, and he makes the play. Rollins ends it. Five in a row, set down by the left hander. He storms through.
Presents Diamondbacks Baseball brought to you by Southwest Airlines. They're ready when you will grab your bag. It is on. And by Blimpy, America's sub shop. Carlos Ruiz. And the slider is strike one. Cole Hamill's pretty good tonight. Yeah, not bad. Halfway decent. Ruiz. Fly ball. Chris Young is there. And he makes the play for the out. Here's Cole to hit for himself again. Keep it rolling right along. Pitcher Cole Hamill. I'll tell you, Grace, you look back. He bunted, popped up a bunt in the sixth inning, but his double with one out in the fifth. I think that proved to be one of the big, big steps in chasing. And his miscues behind Danny as well. But no question. But that double, a great at bat. He put an eight pitch at bat on Danny Heron and ripped a double in the left center gap. And that was one of the one of the fatal pulls of the Jenga tower. I never like when that Jenga tower comes tumbling down. No, especially if you're the guy that pulled the last brick. Mm. That is strike three. So Hamels will head back. Our Chaz Roberts cool play. We're looking around for contracts and fans to make good plays, get four free tickets. There's one. That's without a doubt. Worthy of one. This oh. one might be catch of the year. Yep, there's my son. That might be play of the year. High school baseball coach. Swing and a miss. There's a change up and the count is 0 and 1. Breaking ball and it's a strike. 0 and 2 the count. Gutierrez, very impressive here in the top of the eighth inning. Two quick outs and he's 0-2. And he's 0-3. Very nice. Juan Gutierrez. How about to let that create a little momentum? How about somebody kicks the bat rack? Kick it! Kick it! Four to one the score. Chris Snyder back up, back better. Rehab over. First pitch swinging fouls it off. Chris and Vasilia and Reno combined was five for twenty with a double, and he homered last night. Six strikeouts. That's what he's done on the season. A 
0-1 the count. 0-2 the count, the fastball over the inside corner. He's probably thinking, man, now I know what these guys that have been in the lineup tonight are seeing. Hamill's just pounding the strike zone. Why does his 90 seem like it has so much more on it than others 90? Well, because he's six foot five, he's right on top of you when he's delivering it. Oh, baby. This and that, can pitch. that 79 seemed like it was about 30. Unbelievable pitch. Our in-game box score, you can see what's going on. Nova home loans. And it's been all Cole Hamill. I tell you, you get a guy off the bench and you're Cole Hamels. As Steven lifts down to the left field. And the play is made. Steven right away as he raced, so he won for four tonight. But he got Chris Snyder coming off the bench. And when you've slowed the game down like he has and you're that confident, that's like putty in his hands. Oh, yeah. I mean, he really exactly. enjoyed that matchup. And, and he made it look easy. His last two pitches, Gracie, that he made to him. Textbook, and it's the eighth inning. Mm -hmm. That was pitched, you know, he's in the hundreds with his pitches. There's strike one again. This is what you're talking about, Darren. That's the 0 2 up and in. And then, well, just the, the change up. Just easily done. Still plenty fresh. Still plenty of zip on the fastball. His location still near perfect. And there's another breaking ball right on the button. Right now, he's in a lounge chair out there. Two and two the count. See the uh, mixed allegiance is there. Popped up right side. Beat him with a fastball. Pitch number 112 ends the inning. Roberts has erased a dominating performance tonight from the young left hand. Baseball fans, this is your evening, no doubt about it. Be sure to get tickets now for the next post game concert featuring country music artist Montgomery Gentry. I'm glad I got this read, I like this one. The concert will follow the Astros D Bats game on Saturday, August 29th. The concert is free with a ticket to that night's game. Look at that little youngster, he's coming. 
He's coming because I'm telling you folks about it. 602 514 8400 or visit dbacks.com slash concert. Montgomery Gentry in concert. <laughs> Oh, I'll tell you what, you did that so well, Darren Sutton. Saturday, August 29th. You know, you deserve an Emmy for that one. I'm telling you. Uh, it was just handed to me. Uh, it's a conspiracy around here. I, that was just, I was on the phone the entire break. It was just handed to me. Between you and Scott no, Snyder no, 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 no. Matt Williams. Oh, no, Chad Qualls. All the, the crew word. in the truck. I'm telling you, boy. I love Montgomery Gentry. I know. Come on, man. That's a strike. Chad Qualls gets in there. Owen won the count. Just hand it to me. Yeah. I closed the cell phone. They said, you're back in 10. Read this. Yeah. So I read it. I'm glad you told Kristen I said hello. Absolutely. And then you stole my read. That was sat right in front of me. Bouncing ball. Chad Tracy. The play is made in time for the out. Mark McClune standing by, talking about friendship. Mark? Yeah, Chad Qualls on the mound for the D-backs. Brad Lidge, looks like that's him getting loose in the bullpen. Can't really tell from my angle, but uh, both guys in the bullpen together uh, in Houston back when Houston went to the World Series against the White Sox in 2005. Paul said he considers Lidge one of his best friends in baseball, learned so much from him in the bullpen, especially taking advantage of a pinch hitter's aggressiveness that you don't have to throw a first pitch strike from a guy who's been uh, swinging down in the cage and, and gets in the box for his first at bat of the game. The two plan to go to lunch tomorrow before the game, but I think Qualls would be very happy if uh, that's after a Brad Lidge blown save tonight. Good stuff as he fires the strike. Electric fastball there. And don't forget, by the way, August 29th, Montgomery Gentry will be in concert after the Astros take on the Diamondbacks. A lot of fun. Wow. So well done, Darren. Thief. The 0 1. Fouled back. He's doing what I'm told. Oh, yeah. Read this copy. Here you go. Read it. You always got my back, don't you? As long as you're here. 0-2 the count. Becoming very evident. I'll have you back in New York. I'll tell you that. We're on the air on Saturday at City Field, you and I. I'll be right there protecting you. In with a slide. And cheating, opening it up. Into that bullpen. Nearly into the redhead section there. Sailed right through it. Love them tonight. They've come, as we said, walked up 200 extra on top of what we had gathered up. Exactly. And haven't had much to cheer about, but you know what? They were loud. There's Ellen. There's our lady. She was great, wasn't she? I think she liked me better than she liked you, to be honest with you. I'm going to start going there on you. I probably right, actually. Well, she kissed you. She didn't kiss me. <laughs> One and two, the count. Just a little jealous. Oh, look. There's our guys. Oh boy. Taking pictures of themselves. Uh, peace. <laughs> One and two. I'll tell you what, they're locked in. You got to give them that. <laughs> Slider, and it's a foul ball. They caught themselves. They caught that red light. They caught Mickey's red light. One and two, the count. We got the Mardi Gras beads. Oh, not a good play in the stands there. That's a shame. And he almost made the play. That would have been worthy of a contract. I'm looking to give out a contract. That just ended up by accident that that gal got it. Yeah. Rattled around. Down below. Throw it back. No, don't throw it back. Keep it. The one, two. Outside with a slider, two and two, the count. You can see, I got a Chase Utley foul ball. Oh, see, uh, we lead the league in love, Darren Sutton. Well, Chase Fields been voted as a great place to bring a date. Like, 
can see why. Davy Lopes still quick over there at first base, huh? Yeah, he really is. Hopped right over that ball. And there's the great base stealer of yesteryear with the Los Angeles Dodgers. Well, what a player he was. What an infield it was together forever. He was second baseman with Garvey at first, Bill Russell at short, Ron Say at third for years and years. Well, Chase Utley just continuing to battle. Two and two, the count. Davey Lopes, 557 career stolen bases. Still 77 for the Dodgers in 1975. You just don't see that anymore, do you? No, he's he's a good baseball mind too. Quiet. Wasn't as comfortable with the spotlight on him as a manager. Yeah, you had him in Milwaukee. Had him. Unfortunately, for a brief time when I came in, it was a very tough year for Milwaukee. He was just there for the first part of the season. He had put together a couple of seasons prior to that before I came when Matt Vasgersian was in the booth in Milwaukee. But. Everyone raves about his baseball knowledge and you could see it there. With all the other things that go along with the game some people just don't enjoy it. I don't know that I blame him. I, I tell you I was watching Charlie Manuel today. Here's a guy that travels a probably a, a bigger pack because uh -huh. it's a bigger town. And he chatted answered all the questions for the print media. I had a few questions that I figured would kind of be not what the daily guys would want to hear big picture stuff. He was great with it. Another 10 minutes off of his clock. Now he's a good man. It's a class team. Oh, what an at bat. What an at bat. Are you kidding me? That's why he's one of the best hitter in the game. 12 pitches. One of the best hitters in the game. And, and, and watch the pitch. Look at the pitch. It's almost on the ground. And look at Chad Claus. You've got to be kidding me. Yeah. He's a good one, Chad. I mean, that's a great pitch. And Chad's reaction, golly, probably feels like you just read his Montgomery Gentry read. They're coming, folks. It's going to be a lot of fun. As that one is away to Ryan Howard, 1 0, the count. We'll see you here August 29th. After that Astros game. Big shift defensively. Three defenders between first and second. In the right field, here comes Justin Elton to play on the hop. And because of the big shift, Utley turned and looked again. Is anyone get back there to third? They are. Well, allow me, folks. Follow the D-backs on your iPhone and iPod Touch with MLB.com at bat 2009. Featuring play-by-play -play and video highlights from Fox Sports Arizona and live audio broadcasts from KTAR Radio. Visit dbacks.com on your iPhone or iPod Touch to purchase. Ah, that is yes. great. Well done. Ah, uh, Darren. The sudden stamp of approval on that read. Thank you so much. I won one the count. Nice to get involved in a broadcast. The senior booth producer up here who is having a really tough year, Scott Snyder, handed the copy to me. I just thought that's what I was supposed to do. He's having a terrible year. There's no question about that. The 0-1. Trying to get a ground ball from Ibanez. One and one the count. That was the ground ball pitch, one and two. Mikey. Mikey Haggerty. 
Oh, break out the laser pointer. Don't ever do that. Mikey. Mikey advertising the wrong thing there. One and two. Wow. Two and two the count. for the second out. So Chad Qualls after a long at bat from Utley and Howard he gets a bond. Yes. Now I have to deal with Jason Worth here with two outs. The average single man is one inch shorter than the average married man. Four runs seven hits in an air for the Phillies. They have stranded nine Arizona. A run on four hits and two errors. They have left four on base. That's where we stand. One and oh, the count with the sinking fastball. Wants a new baseball, the count two and oh. J.A. Happ is on the mound tomorrow for the Philadelphia Phillies. What a story he has been this year. A young man out of Northwestern. 7-1 and one with the 2.97. Yusmero Petit on the mound looking for his first win of the year for the Diamondbacks. Happ spent early this evening going to school with Jamie Moyer who is working and working with him. He's a left-hander. There's a slider and it's strike one. Tracy and I will have the game for you. And we're looking forward to bringing baseball and visiting your home. Thanks for letting us come in tonight. The 2 1 slider. Yes, you went. That's Brian Rungi there. For the count, two balls and two strikes. Hang in there, Bart. Two two. Now that bat is done. You could hear with that fastball running in. St. Louis having fun tonight with the Dodgers. They lead it by a score of seven to nothing. St. Louis been putting it on the Dodgers the last couple of nights. Yeah, they certainly have tonight for the Cardinals. It's Adam Wainwright dealing. And a big night offensively. Just about everyone in that lineup. 2-2. Two -two. Slider. Wow, how do you take that pitch? I don't know. Well, last year the Dodgers made the big splash and went and got Manny Ramirez, Darren Sutton. Do you think they'll make the big splash this year and go get the, the big fish again? And Roy Halladay, I think they could use another starter. I think that's the Red Sox that's going to land Halladay. Do you? Three and two with two outs. Daniel told a great story today. They said, boy, is it different around trade rumor time? So, well, no. Took the bus to the health food store in front of the hotel, caught the city bus, and came back and took the cab to the park. So, so it wasn't any different? No. His day wasn't any different for Montero and Paul's going to get on the same page. And of course, the uh, the East Coast journalist digs a little bit. What'd you get at the health food store? Not nah, just some stuff. And I got.
got back on the bus and as a matter of fact didn't have change for a dollar it was 95 cents he was right. I would imagine maybe on Central or Camelback somewhere in that area yeah. and uh, ended up well, borrowing 25 cents to go with the change in his pocket Fine Arizonans helped to pay for his ride on the bus. Had to borrow a quarter huh. Yeah he had cash money. That's strike three but we host here. We host we make sure you're comfortable riding the bus. Let's see if these fans can now host a comeback victory. Players and I like to talk with them. Okay, for our players and I like to talk with them. I like to kid with them. I like to, you know, I joke and kid with them and things. And we, and uh, you know, like we have, a, we talk about a lot of different things outside of baseball. And I think it, uh, I think it, uh, getting to know them and letting them express themselves and feeling. Uh, very comfortable around you and everything. I think that's part of being a manager. And that's usually kind of a kind of, kind of going right. Communication. All your good managers are always in constant communication with their players, their coaches, and not always about baseball. How's the family? How's things at home? If you need anything, you let me know. You know what? I'm not going to play you tomorrow, but I'm going to need you the next day. Just constant communication with his players, his coaches, dealing with the media, the Philadelphia media. Easier said than done, Darren Sutton. I mean, out here, I mean, the, the players and the coaches and the managers, they get a pretty free and easy ride out here compared to back east as far as the media is concerned. I would agree. You know, there's most of the most of the journalists out here, and that is either print journalists or radio or TV. They're not out to hurt people out here. They're not out to hurt you. Whereas you can't say that back east. There's a lot of people out to hurt you. I think Charlie plays it exactly right. Well, there was there was a time, Darren, when you and I would be in the booth, and we might be doing a Phillies game, and in Philadelphia, and any time that man poked his head out of the dugout two years ago, he got mer mercilessly booed. Yes. Well, now he gets the red carpet anywhere he goes in the city of brotherly love. Winning does that, doesn't it? Oh, you bet it does. Especially winning titles. You were around here. You know what that's like. Yeah. I still... Always have to pay when I'm with you. Yeah, that's one of the specialties of working with you. Is Brad Lidge rocks and fires. Fastball is high. Three and one the count. Well, it's got to start somewhere. Might as well start with Justin up, and he's got a three-one count. Brad Lidge had a one-two-three inning last night in a non-save situation. On to save it again. And he missed. And that's there ball we ball. go. 
I'll tell you what, if this club rallies and do the walk-off, takes it up to six runs, I'll treat tacos tomorrow because any time the D-bag scores six runs or more, Taco Bell's giving away three free tacos with the purchase of large drink between four and six the next day. So there you go, my treat. <sighs> Oh, you are something special. And so is this kid in the box with 27 home runs. Mark Reynolds going to take his chances with lights out Lidge. That's a slider for strike one. Brad Lidge on May 24th, after another blown save at Yankee Stadium, had an ERA of nearly 10. Runner goes. Throw down. For Justin Upton, number 14 of the year. Well, the good news is the Diamondbacks got the stolen base. If you're going to go in that situation, you better be safe. Down three runs. I mean, you better be, well, you better be safe by that much. You bet. And he was. And he was. That is six stolen bases against Lynch this year with just one thrown out. One ball, one strike. Now Lidge is a bit wild here to start the ninth inning. Well, he's more than a bit wild. He walked Justin up and now he's two and one here on Mark Reynolds. Slider. by Mark Reynolds and I mean leaving your jaw dropped wide open. I don't know if I've seen a long wooden mat down something. Goodness gracious Mark Reynolds. I was fortunate enough to see Richie Sexton hit the longest one. He hit the scoreboard. Oh my goodness a hanging slider. Look where this ball lands. Oh. Four to three is the score, by the way. Memories of Albert Pujols dancing in his head as he watches that one sail out. Are you going to do something about this game now? You come up with a hit like that? Well, Darren, also, it... it Goes to our theory. Anybody but Cole Hamels. They take out Cole Hamels, who is breezing through eight. Oh my goodness, what a play. How did he come up with that one? But he did. What a play there by Ryan Howard for the first out. This one could have easily gotten away on the short hop. But he found it and made the play. First and foremost, another base runner is tantamount for the Diamondbacks. But as I sit here in this seat and take a look at where that ball went and look at all the seats below, all the distance, as that one goes on fly ball in field. Over to make the play, Tom Mabry Jr., who has come on and now two outs. Again, here's what we're talking about. Here. Up in there. I mean, 
he hits balls consistently where Darren, where you just don't see balls hit consistently. I mean, when he hits them, they go so far. Slider, and it's beautiful. Here's the flight of the ball. That's last night. And hit that second set of steps. Slider, 0 and 2. Last night's homer to the opposite field measured in, according to HitTrackerOnline.com, 455 feet. Lifted left field, long run. Mayberry. The Phillies win the ball game. Very disappointing to have it end the way it does. You get a, a big home run from Mark Reynolds. Now you start even licking your wounds more on some poor defense for the Diamondbacks. And you find yourself stuck at that again. Yeah, unfortunately, the world changed.